Hi all, my name is Risa Eldon and I'm the head of community here at House. Today I'm joined with senior editor Mitchell Parker and we are super thrilled to give you a trend recap at this year's Kitchen and Bath show. House Pro offers an end-to-end solution that empowers home remodeling and design professionals to stand out, win more clients, and manage their projects and teams more efficiently and profitably. So without further ado, Mitchell, love to hear your take on this year's show. Thanks, Risa. So as many of the listeners might know already, the Kitchen and Bath Industry show experienced some technical difficulties with their servers. So a lot of the virtual booths kind of went down. But um, despite those glitches, a you know, lot of brands and a lot of these top exhibitors use this uh, moment during the show to uh, launch and debut new products for the coming year. So we still met with a lot of exhib- exhibitors. We still um, chatted with some of these brands and we went through these press releases and we looked at tons of photos and um, we still kind of gathered some of the cool things that we saw into a kind of trends recap um, for the, um, our editorial coverage of the show. And so uh, I would like to share some of those with you today. And these are kinds of some things that are going on right now and that we think will be um, popular in the coming year. So the first one that I wanted to share was about engineered surfaces. So um, engineered countertops and backsplashes are just so big right now. It's a durable surface, heat resistant, scratch resistant. And these um, companies release new styles and colors throughout the year, right? So um, right now, the big trend in these surfaces is marble looks with a white uh, main background. You know, last year, a lot of these countertop companies came out with dark colors. But, um, you know, once the pandemic hit, the mood kind of shifted. And homeowners are really looking for light, bright kind of optimistic, fresh feeling colors, but but not too sterile. We're not seeing a lot of just solid, crisp whites that kind of might remind people of a hospital or laboratory setting. So here's an example right here by Caesar Stone. It's a new color in their new collection, um, their white light collection, which really focuses on a lot of these white um, colors. This is a a marble look um, called, that mimics the look of Arabetto marble. And you know those ve- the veining in there can just um, you know really range from darks to lights to grays to blues. So you can really kind of um, you know choose a, a material that coordinates with other finishes in your kitchen. This is beautiful. This is stunning. Wow. Do you know anything about price points here? Is semi affordable? You know it's it's going to range between the company you go to, the size. Uh, uh, you know, the amount of slabs that you're getting. And, you know, uh, a lot of these companies still report that there's still some tariffs from China that have um, kept these uh, materials kind of um, at, a, at a higher price point than usual, though, um, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, move around their budget within their kitchen design so that they can still afford this product because it's so popular. It's so durable. Um, it's, it lasts for a long time. It, it's like I said, heat resistant, scratch resistant, and these new styles that are coming out are, um, you know, really, like I said, allow people to choose a marble look that has that durability. And then that veining, you can kind of coordinate it with other finishes, your, your cabinet color, your faucet finish. So you can choose, you know, gray veining, uh, green veining, blue veining. Um, so the, the options are, are pretty unlimited and um, you know so w- whatever the price point is people usually um, try to save elsewhere so they can get this great product <laughs> that makes sense that makes sense thanks so much this is beautiful absolutely and the next one is um, touchless faucets you know the other thing that we saw in this previous year was an attention to um, hand washing and a, kind of a, an awareness of not wanting to spread germs throughout a household, not touching things, you know, spreading germs from surface to surface. And in the kitchen where, where you're handling things like, like raw meat and doing a lot of hand washing and touching surfaces, um, the touchless technology is really taking off and a, a lot of manufacturers are offering this technology in new faucets. Um, this one here by Kohler, 
Um, you know, you can walk up to it. It's also voice activated. So you can connect it with the Amazon device or, or Google device and kind of walk up to it and say, you know, Alexa, turn on my faucet and it'll turn on. Um, you can program different water settings, amounts and temperatures to um, deliver you on voice command the proper amount of water and temperature that you have kind of, you know, predetermined beforehand. So um, it also has a lever, so you can use it the traditional way, but, um, you know, this touchless feature is really popular right now, and you're definitely going to see a lot more of it. One thing that this makes me think of, and I spent a lot less time traveling and a lot more time in the kitchen this year, Mitchell, is the amount of paper towels that I use in between washing meat and then drying my hands, and especially, I know, there was a lot of washing of things in 2020 and carried into 2021. So what's amazing about this is the amount of waste um, that we are actually potentially reducing by not using as many paper towels in between washing our vegetables, our meat, our eggs, all the different things. So I think this is a really amazing thing to bring into the kitchen that you designed 2021 and moving forward. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like I said earlier, there's different options for this. You can activate it by voice. There's, um, there's sensors where you can wave a hand in front of it. And then some I've seen that you can kind of bump it with an elbow. It has like a nozzle piece in the front that you can just kind of slam it with an elbow, which I think sounds kind of satisfying. But so, you know, be on the lookout for this touchless technology. Most of the major manufacturers are offering it now. That's great. And one last question here is when you voice, you say, you know, Alexa, turn on, can you say Alexa, turn on hot water, Alexa, turn on cold water? It just is the functionality is there to just turn it on. You can do all kinds of things. You can program it however you want. You can say, Alexa, fill my pet's bowl and it will um, put in, if your dog likes two cups of uh, room temperature water in the morning, you can go out and say, Alexa, fill my dog's bowl and hold it under the faucet and it will put out two cups of water at room temperature. Um, so yeah, the, the possibilities are really endless. You can program it to do just kind of whatever you want. Um, you can tell it to kind of do whatever you want. So it's, it's kind of cool. Incredible functionality. Technology really coming into the home in so many various ways and know, beautiful right? looking. Yeah. Um, so this next one, you know, we've been seeing a lot of two-tone finishes in um, kitchen faucets of late. Um, this Ecclesi line by Roll, they launched it last year at KBEZ with their bathroom faucet line, and they have extended it into the kitchen um, this year. And you'll notice that there's basically three components to this. You can choose the spout and base finish. That's one finish. Um, the, the knob finish in the center here, the circle, um, is a different finish. And then the ring around that, you can choose a different finish as well. So you can kind of, you know, mix and match, um, you know, faucet finishes. The first one, you know, has a, a chrome with a black ring. The second one has the matte black spout with the, um, silver ring. So, um, this kind of two-tone option is really taking off and allowing homeowners to coordinate and mix metals. You know, you'll hear that a lot, these mixed metal, mixed metal design. So this just, you know, opens up that opportunity to um, coordinate finishes and mix finishes and just add a little bit of kind of nuance to um, faucet finishes. And, you know, Roll is not the only line that released this. Uh, several, you'll see a lot of matte black with brass um, metals mixed in the kitchen as well as bathroom faucets. This is super interesting, Mitchell, because I've seen a lot of designers use mixed metals in the home, hardware, um, you name it, but I've never, I personally haven't seen it on a faucet like this. So I think this is gonna be a huge hit and something that designers and builders and models will pick up because it adds an extra special touch to your kitchen. Yeah, it's interesting how trends can start in one area of the home and then migrate into another. So something that you see is popular in kitchens right now, chances are you're going to see it in bathrooms soon um, or in the laundry room or, you know, mixing metals in a living room, just, you know, everything kind of just moves around until it proliferates and then it's just everywhere in the home. So <laughs> that's kind of what we're seeing with the, the mixed metals for sure. Awesome. Beautiful.
Okay, slim appliances were kind of everywhere during the announcements at the show. Um, you know, a lot of exhibitors talked about empty nesters or um, homeowners who are downsizing during the pandemic or um, people living in smaller spaces. They're at home a lot of time. Maybe they're in a smaller apartment. Maybe they moved into a smaller space um, and don't need the capacity of a full-size standard refrigerator or in this case, a dishwasher. This is Miele's 18 inch dishwasher, just a super slim dishwasher. Um, you know, perfect for somebody who, you know, lives alone or just two people in the house and doesn't go through a lot of dishes. Maybe they, they like hand washing items sometimes, but um, we saw slim microwaves, slim refrigerators um, that are just like, you know, 24 inches wide and, um, you know, just other kind of slim appliances just really take off this year. And then the other thing with this dishwasher too, you know, some people like having a secondary dishwasher in their home for when they, it's just, you know, them and their spouse or partner or roommates. And, but then they might also have a standard size dishwasher as well for when they do um, have those kind of big parties and big entertaining or something like that. But um, definitely a lot more options out there for slim appliances for people who don't need the, you know, pro style full size um, appliances. Living in San Francisco, this makes me particularly happy <laughs> because I remember when I was putting in a washer and dryer and it was just so hard to find an affordable smaller washer and dryer um, and dishwashers, especially when you have a kitchen that's that small, but you want to incorporate a dishwasher, which a lot of New York style San Francisco apartments don't have. And now that we're all cooking and cleaning and being in our apartment more, this is, this is very exciting for 2021. Yeah, definitely. So if you are considering an appliance, um, kind of, you know, think about what you need and um, talk to some of these, uh, you know, brands and manufacturers out there, you know, Thor came out with a 24 inch gas range, which um, is mm. really cool as well. So lots out there to, to consider. It also makes it going back to just the efficiency topic that I was talking about earlier. You know, if you want to clean things in your dishwasher, but you don't want to run a whole cycle if it's only half full, having a smaller dishwasher makes economic sense in more than one ways. So yeah, great absolutely. Thing. Thinking about the range as well, you know, uh, I see a lot of people talk about they have a favorite burner on a range. So like, you know, some people don't use all the burners on their range. They only use a couple. So it's kind of like, why have the full size if you're only using a, a couple of the, um, the burners? Anyway. Totally makes sense. Okay. And this was a really cool appliance as well. This was um, launched by Blue Star. It's called Blue Star by Design. And you'll notice these graphic panels on the front that mimic the look of a patterned tile. Now this concept by Blue Star Design allows homeowners or designers to specify any kind of drawing or pattern or artwork on these panels. It's available for some ranges and refrigerators. Um, basically what you do, you send in a high res image to Blue Star and they convert that into paneling for the appliance. You can do um, your favorite wallpaper design. You can do a kid's drawing that you just love. Um, you can do your grandmother's quilt. You can just basically do any pattern drawing um, texture. I've seen some wood looks, just anything you can kind of imagine. Get the high res file or photo of it, send it into Blue Star Design, and they will create these custom panels for you. It's really neat. You should go check out some of the other examples that they released. Um, just tons of cool artwork and, and things that um, appear on these appliances. Now, in terms of pricing, is this soup? Is this a little bit customizable? Say you pick something like this, um, and then in three years you wanted to change out the panel because you were tired of it, or times changed, or whatever. You know, sometimes if you have a slip cover on your sofa, you can change it out to from blue to white in three years. Is that the same thing, or this is kind of like in the price range when you pick your your picking? For the range, you can swap out the panels. Okay. Um, I'm not sure on the price point. They they didn't really talk about it yet. Um, okay. It will be a premium feature. So um, 
you know, you can check into that. But for the refrigerator, it is permanent. So if you are choosing panels for the refrigerator, you might want to, you know, be sure if, you know, um, kind of like getting a tattoo or something, you really you got to make sure that you really, really want that before you uh, before you do it. But yeah, the range you can swap out. Um, so you can, you know, if, if you get tired of it in three years, you can pick a new um, new paneling. Awesome. This is really cool. Okay, moving into bathrooms. Um, there was a lot of talk about the resurgence of the bathtub in the previous year. I talked to many exhibitors and manufacturers um, who spoke of just renewed and increased interest in the bathtub. You know, for a while we were talking about people ripping out the bathtub, you know, getting bigger showers and, um, you know, should you keep the tub? Should you ditch it? Um, and I think that that debate is still ongoing, but it seems like more people, um, you know, discovered or rediscovered the benefits of a bathtub, myself included. I was never a bath person before. Um, after this pandemic, I take a bath almost every night. Um, and, you know, I think it's a, a lot of them talked about just the kind of lifestyle within the home, you know, you're a lot of people are home more during the day, you might have um, dueling Zoom calls with your spouse, your kids are trying to do remote work. Um, there's been a lot of talk about just trying to find a quiet place of one's own within the home and, um, you know, de-stressing at the end of the day, finding a way to re relax. You can't go out, you know, to the bar or to a restaurant to meet friends. Just where in the home can you de-stress and relax and, you um, you know, what better place than behind a locked door to the bathroom, in the tub, you got the hot water, tea or something. Um, so just a, a lot of brands launched new sizes in tubs. This is a Victoria and Albert 60 inch tub. Um, we saw a lot of kind of smaller freestanding tubs, um, you know, 60 inch was a, a popular size that a lot of manufacturers launched. Um, so you can expect to see new features in bathtubs and just um, colors. Victoria and Albert launched new colors for bathtubs as well. So, um, you know, it just I, I think this is going to be a year where, where bathtubs kind of make make a comeback and, and you might hear more people saying, you know what, I'm, I'm going to keep my bathtub. I don't want to get rid of it. Totally. This is a true stay at home spa moment for everyone. And when you can't go out to the spa and you have to create your own moment, I think people are rethinking this space and what better to do it with something fun and add, you know, a fun shaped bathtub or a fun color um, and really make it your own special sacred space to get away from everything and everyone and the computer. Yeah, exactly. When you're behind a locked door and you don't have clothes on, you're in a bathtub, people leave you alone. You know, they, they take <laughs> that as a cue, like, you know, dad is in there, you can't bother him, you know? So I think it's a good, it's a good place to be at the end of the day. Awesome. Very cool. Also in bathrooms, we talked about engineered surfaces earlier for countertops and backsplashes, but a lot of manufacturers are coming out with super slim engineered slabs. Um, this is Decton's Optima line. Um, this allows designers, homeowners, um, fabricators to install these engineered durable surfaces as wall cladding, um, particularly popular in the bathroom where you have a lot of wet surfaces. Um, it minimizes grout lines, so you're not, um, you know, worrying about mold and mildew on grout lines within the bathroom. And it just makes for a really nice, continuous, um, waterproof surface. You'll see this example here within the bathtub, um, and allows you to create kind of like a wet room style. So um, almost every countertop brand I spoke with now has a super slim or super thin rather option for their engineered surface products that will allow you to line a shower with it, um, line the walls, do a tub surround, or even do something like a fireplace um, cladding as well. This is completely stunning. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah, it's nice too. And, you know, if you want that wet room look, um, this really cuts down, like I said, on the grout lines and the amount of tile um, to, to create that kind of cohesive look. 
Um, so for faucets, you know, we talked earlier about in kitchens, you see this two, two tone finish for faucets mixing like matte black with brass. The other trend we're seeing um, with faucets is a two texture finish, I guess you could call it, where, um, you know, you have this, this juxtaposition of super polished and streamlined surfaces on the, the faucet or fixture, and then um, counterbalanced with a rough, or in this case, wavy um, texture. And this is a Rio Bell's um, Reflet faucet. And you'll see that it combines this super smooth finish with this wavy design on the underside of the neck that is meant to mimic kind of an undulating surface of water. Um, we saw lots of manufacturers take this approach with smooth and rough finishes, um, cross hatching, knurled knobs, um, fluting on the knobs. So um, it's just kind of, you know, we talked, we, we heard a lot of talk about just this kind of balance within the past year of push and pull of, um, you know, opposing forces, opposing sides and finding harmony within that tension. And, um, you know, I, I think you can see this reflected in a lot of the product design of, of finding that kind of balance of light and dark or two finishes, or um, in this case, two textures. Also super stunning. And this is my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta end with the, uh, the Moxie Showerhead by Kohler. Um, you know, this is a fun product. They announced it last year, but it is available now. This is a shower head that has this magnetic docking station for which you can um, insert a Bluetooth speaker, um, a high quality speaker that accounts for the white noise of the shower spray and kind of adjusts for it. Um, you can remove that inner speaker and put it on your countertop as you're, you know, as you get out of the shower and you're doing your makeup or brushing your hair or brushing your teeth, um, you can kind of take it with you and it's, it's a Bluetooth speaker, but it's also waterproof. Um, and a new feature now that um, Kohler recently launched is it is now voice activated. So you can um, say, you know, uh, Alexa, play my, you know, favorite song or tell me that you can be in the shower and say, you know, Alexa, what's, what's the weather today? All kinds of um, cool features like that connected um, to Amazon Alexa. And some of the other cool features we saw, um, you know, this aromatherapy shower head um, from Moen that allows you to swap in different kind of curing cups of scented oils so that that in, infuses the shower spray with scented oils. So, you know, kind of going back to the resurgence of the bathtub and, you know, homeowners looking to the bathroom to have that kind of spa-like experience. Um, we're really seeing a lot of innovation in technology associated with the experience of showering um, that just allows you to kind of have a super relaxing um, time and, you know, listen to music and um, smell pretty and all that good stuff. I love that. I love that. Does this shower head come in a couple different finishes? It does. You can, uh, you know, there's, I, I forget how many, but um, there's this matte white here. I know there's um, kind of a matte black one. So um, you can kind of mix and match that as well. Awesome. And like, to your point, such a necessity moving forward and so many people being in one house and just different unique ways to really make a house a home and create a sanctuary in your home when you can't get out to a spa and you can't get out to dinner. I think that leveraging this type of technology and these fixtures is going to make a huge difference. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, if you want to see more, we've got a lot of editorial coverage um, associated with these, these product announcements. So just check it out on house and um, thanks, Risa. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here with us today, Mitchell, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye now. House Pro is a day one choice for me. It's a tool that I wake up to. I look at it throughout the day. As a designer, we take it for granted that we can see the envision, and sometimes our clients can't. 
So the mood boards allows them to, to hone in on all the design elements that we're pulling together. Everything that I've assigned to that client in that room, it's right there in my library. So I literally drag and drop it on the mood board, place it where I want to. It allows so much functionality for me and my business.